Now, um, this is also alluding to the fact that um, the cell is going to have differences between what's inside the cell and what's outside of the cell. And something that is important in metabolism and cell physiology is the idea of concentration gradients. So a concentration gradient is when you have a different concentration of a solute outside the cell compared to inside of the cell. And so this would be, um, this could be a situation where you have a, a high concentration of glucose outside of the cell and a low concentration of glucose inside of the cell. And we know that that glucose can't just travel down the, uh, across the phospholipid bilayer by itself. Now, compounds strive to have an equal concentration across both sides of the membrane. They always strive for equilibrium. Um, and now when we have different concentrations of solutes on different sides of the membrane, that is actually a form of potential energy. And so we can use that potential energy to drive other types of chemical reactions. So in this example that we're looking at here, we see that there's a higher concentration of these green hexagons on the outside of the cell and a lower concentration on the inside of the cell. In this particular example, we see that there's also this blue protein channel that is specifically shaped to allow those green compounds to travel down their concentration gradient into the cell. And that is always what com uh, compounds are gonna want to do is they want to get to an equilibrium so that the concentration is equal on either side of the cell. But keep this in mind that um, we can use concentration gradients to help drive processes because concentration gradients are a form of potential energy. We'll build on that later today. Okay, one more thing that I want to uh, uh, emphasize to you in terms of concentration gradients is that sometimes for cells, we want, to, we want to create concentration gradients so that we can use those gradients to drive other processes. And one very important, some may, see them, some may say the most important transporter that lives in the membranes of cells is a, 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 a pump that actually functions to do just that, to maintain different concentrations of ions across a cell membrane. So I'm gonna introduce you to the sodium potassium pump. And so the sodium, so first of all, cells are going to have a higher concentration of sodium ions on the outside of the cell in the extracellular space. And we can see that here where we have lots of these orange sodium ions outside of the cell. And then cells are gonna have a higher concentration of potassium ions inside of the cell. And so we can see that here where these yellow ovals are representing the potassium ions, which are inside the cell. So higher concentration of sodium outside, higher concentration of potassium inside. Now the uh, sodium potassium pump is responsible for maintaining these differences in concentration. And so the way this sodium potassium pump works is it will start by facing the inside of the cell and it's going to take three sodiums that are inside the cell it, and then it's going to use some ATP, the energy currency of the cell, in order to change its conformation and spit those sodiums out to the outside of the cell. So that's gonna help keep a high concentration of sodium outside of the cell. When the transporter is open towards that extracellular space, it is going to pick up two potassium ions and then it's going to revert itself back to facing the inside of the cell and spit out those two potassium ions there. Now, what I uh, pointed out here is that in order for the sodium potassium pump to perform this action, to pump sodiums out and pump potassiums in, it requires ATP, it requires energy. And as we talk through some more metabolism, what we will learn is that providing energy, providing ATP to the sodium potassium pump is one of the biggest uses of energy in the human body.